with over 400 celebrity interviews and tons of pop culture nerdiness, Too Opinionated is a safe haven for your inner geek. Find us at MeisterCon.com or on YouTube under MeisterCon Pod. And please subscribe. It would really help us out. Thanks, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Too Opinionated. Super excited today. I've got actor, writer, director, Wayne David with me. So welcome, Wayne. Hey, how's it going? It's going really good. Super excited to talk about uh, Wolf Garden. I was, uh, I can't remember who I was interviewing, but it was several months back. And we were talking about the need for a new uh, group of werewolf movies. We haven't had that in a while. And then here you come with maybe the perfect movie to fit the bill. Uh, well, we tried our best. Um, you know, obviously, it is a werewolf movie, but yeah, we, we feel it's something a little bit different, something maybe uh, something maybe that people haven't quite seen before from a werewolf movie, something a bit more psychological, a bit more suspense thriller. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, uh, the trailer looks really good. It kind of gave me um, the uh, kind of like American Werewolf in London vibes to it, just the feel to it. Yeah, I think, I mean, that that's always sort of the benchmark, I think, when you, when you look at werewolf movies. I think uh, that was, for me, that was always the best one. You sort of go back maybe to the original The Wolfman, which is obviously the classic, but American Werewolf in London has always been the one that you sort of, uh, it's always always been my favourite one. And I, I love yeah, mine movie. too. Yeah, uh, mine yeah, too. Just... It's uh, it's such a good movie. and But it had that kind of psychological aspect to it. And that's the kind of the vibe I get off of Wolf Garden. It looks like really interesting and unique, but let me let you describe it. You know, what's the uh, plot to Wolf Garden? What's the movie about? Well, it's kind of like the the movie's following events that we that the audience doesn't see. You know, we, we know something's happened. It's all a bit mysterious. It's uh, basically, there's been some very violent and horrible events that have just uh, mm-hmm. led to this point, And we find the lead character, William, in hiding, in isolation in this cottage in the middle of nowhere in the countryside. And we never quite know exactly what's going on. There's, uh, there's a lot of flashbacks and, you know, memories, dreams, nightmares that happen during the course of the film. So it's not quite a linear uh, time frame of, of what we see and how things, how things go down. And uh, there is a, a mysterious creature that is locked inside a shed in the woods. And um, obviously, as the film goes on, we we find out more about you know what this creature could be, what it's you know what's going on, and uh, why he is kind of being stalked by these figures that are in the woods yeah. as well. So we we've got kind of a mixture of the different sort of you know the layers of the folklore and the, uh, the, the sort of psychological element to it. So you know it's it, it it's trying to do something a bit different we certainly don't have the comedy aspect quite as much as american world in london it's, it's more a sort of uh you know a romantic tragedy i would say which, which i guess you could say is in an american world in london as well yeah um, but yeah i think when you look at that movie you could almost sort of say not that it was entirely intentional in any way but it's it, you know what would have happened to those characters in that that movie had they survived and gone into hiding themselves so it's kind of like you know that that's that's sort of how the, the idea sort of formulated in my head i we you know with lockdown and isolation and stuff there was you know it was it was just a, a theme that was sort of struck home with me so and that was that was what i was going for you know, sort of the what if kind of kind of vibe yeah it. yeah yeah I, I love it is did you write it as a screenplay or or did you write it as a book and you're adapting no, it's um, and no, that was a. It was always originally a screenplay. Um, because I mean, what what happened was I had another film that was going to be made just before. This was back in 2020, so just right. as all this, all the you know, just as everything went <laughs> crazy, we pulled the plug on on the other film I was going to shoot, which was you know, I was very lucky with timing because we you know we didn't lose all our money, so we still had this. Right. You know, I had I had some investment for a film, and I just started thinking about well. You know, the climate had changed everything was different and what could we do how could you shoot something for for a low budget but try and keep it one location try and do something yeah 
try and do something interesting and i think you know that's always the thing as well i think when you've got low budget and when you've got when you're restricted in what you can do it makes you think outside the box a bit more about how can we make this story more interesting you know you can't it's like for example with a you know with a werewolf you know we're not going to on the budget we have we're not going to match the werewolf in you know you, you can't you can't have that same sort of transformation but how can you do something if you can't actually stand toe to toe with it how can we work around it to make it interesting in a in a different sort of way and that was always the angle i came at at it from yeah i i, I think that's really um smart especially if you're leaning into the psychological part of it then you don't maybe need so many practical effects but talk a little bit about that when you did get to that you know those moments where you had to uh, put in some special effects. How did that work? You know, what kind of uh, effects or workaround were you able to do to to convey what you wanted to convey, but on a lower budget? Well, I, I think really, uh, for me, the sort of uh, I always use it as a reference point. Alien, in that that with yeah. that film, it was very much the atmosphere. You establish the atmosphere. You don't see the alien. You see it in flashes, and you know, revealing it would almost ruin it in some way. So rather than having a yeah. an obvious guy dressed up in a you know a rubber wolf suit or you know you know a monster running around, we're very much relying on sort of shadows and you know sound design, and and just and I think it, it's always that thing with horror as well. It's what you don't see is what's always more interesting. What you create with your mind, you always got to have that. It's important to have that payoff, which of course we do have in the film, but it's just about how you reveal that very, very gradually. And you know, I, there's, there's examples all through movies and in the cinema of how that's been done. And um, you know, it, it became kind of an art of how to show something without showing something. And I'm quite proud sure. of how we how we've done that. Um, yeah, no, I think we we did have obviously we had uh, we did have prosthetics and we did have a few. There were only a few VFX shots actually, and that was sort of more of an afterthought. We were trying to do everything practically on set. That was a big thing for us. We said we want to get this film, you know, we want we want this film finished on set. We don't want to have to be looking at any sort of reshoots or having to do anything in in post to fix right. things. We wanted to try and, you know, as, as tricky as that is, we did manage to do that. And it was just kind of the idea with the VFX. We had about I think it was about three VFX shots in it. And it was just really for that. It was just to improve the production value, just to give it a little something extra, just to just just to up up the standard of it. Um, but it, you know, I think it did stand alone without relying too heavily on, on you know on on the effects. But we'll, well, we have got them there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's 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 terrific. I I'm always interested in the behind the scenes stuff. And just as a fan, you know, we don't really have to have those effects. You know, the if if you're developing kind of that uneasiness and that suspense, then you don't really need all of those effects because, you know, we're going to do that in our own minds, and I I think that's that's terrific. So you're wearing you're wearing a lot of hats for this uh, yes, this movie. Yes. So you're you wrote it, you're directing it, you're acting in it. You know, was that difficult to do all three like is is director wayne hard on actor wayne well it you know the whole thing sort of came about by necessity and i, I think the you know the tricky part of it was i thought i was helping the film by sort of having it you know minimal characters and i you know i was on on screen i'm on screen quite a lot and it's just um and you sort of think okay you know that will make life easier but it, you know it, it really doesn't you kind, of, <laughs> you kind of want some other people to be covering picking up some of the slack for you um but no i mean obviously we had you know there's 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 a uh, three characters sort of three main characters on screen in the film and um you know they're they're both brilliant in the energies the different energies they bring to the film but in regards to uh yeah sort of as you say many different hats it was it was tricky. Um, and I think to myself, you know, there is a system I've worked out in my head of how you would do things. And of course, when you're on a set like that, it was, it was crazy. It was hectic. We had, you know, we shot it in 15 right. days. So it wasn't, you know, things, this is the thing about a film. You, you've got to just really, really pre-plan as much as you can. And even when you do pre-plan everything, things still go wrong and you've got to, <laughs> you know, you've got to pick it up and, and work with it. But we, we did. I mean, myself and the director of photography, we really sort of sat down and we kind of pinpoint, you know, it was pinpoint precision in how we wanted things to look and the style we wanted. 
And it was the same with doing the rehearsals with the actors beforehand. I mean, I, I got two very good actors for the other roles and it was just kind of like, you know, you've got people who, who just deliver. And uh, for yeah. myself, uh, as I said, it was kind of, uh, I've, I've done, a, you know, I've done this a few times before where I've, I've directed and acted in the same thing. And yeah. it, it's kind of a little switch you have to have. And it's kind of like you almost you step step behind the camera and uh, you're, you're a different person. Then when you get back, it's kind of like you can't yes. be. You know, there's, there's I, I'm not the sort of person who would, who would, as an actor, I'd start giving directions to the other actor because I think that's disrespectful. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like you want, you want to have that done and in place, and then you know, there's a system of when you step out of that, you're, you're the other role kind of thing. And it, you know, it worked. I mean, there was, there was issues. I mean, it, it, there's always going to be problems. I mean, we had all sorts of COVID issues as well on set, and right. you know, things went, things went wrong. So there was a lot of craziness, and it was hectic and, and quite hellish at times. But um. Yeah, we got there, and I, and I'm not put off to ever do it again. I mean, I, 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 I do believe I could could act and direct again. It's just that thing about knowing what the system would be exactly. You know, right. just, just little things that I would do differently next time. And that's, but that's always the way, isn't it? You learn, you live and learn, and you. That's you, right. You a bit each time. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly uh, exactly right. When when you were writing it, did you write it? with yourself in mind in the in one of the lead roles or did that come later yeah i mean uh, i think i've always been an actor first and foremost and i think it's yeah. kind of like that thing you you kind of to make a movie and it, whether you call it quality you know quality control or whatever because you know actors we have to do lots of things to get show real stuff you, you appear in these little short films and student films or whatever else you do and it's yeah. kind of um it was kind of born out of that when i first did my short film and it's just sort of escalated to a feature film so yeah i mean it, it's it, it would be more likely that i would have handed the director role over to someone else but you know and it's something i considered at, at points as well but i think really when you sort of get to that point of having worked on it for so long and it's like it's your baby and you you know you you, you kind of know it inside out you kind of just get to that point well who could i find that that gets this enough um and so it you know it, it was putting a lot of work on my shoulders but i just had such a a clear vision of what I wanted that I, I kind of had to do both. I felt anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Where, uh, where did you find your um, co-stars? Cause you did, you, you found some pretty good actors to help you out with it. Yeah. I mean, um, with the actors there, uh, with Sean, uh, who's a lead actress, you know, she, she's actually auditioned for something before for me. And I just, uh, I, you know, I remembered her, I kept her in mind and she was almost in the trailer for it. And there was, there's a lot of back and forth with that particular role of, of you know, of what we were going for. Um, and then, you know, as I say, I just remembered Sean and I, it, she just has the right energy for it. And, yeah. and, um, and it is that thing as well It's you know, from an acting point of view, you always, it's just getting seen, I think, getting in the, in the room with people because you do, if that role doesn't, isn't a fit, then, you know, if you're good and, and, and people like you, then, you know they'll they'll use you in future right. and that was that was really the case with sean i mean i just remembered her and i thought she was great and um yeah and, and that's that's kind of how that came about and with grant i mean with that role it was really much it was very much someone it needed to be someone with that level of gravitas who really brought that yes. sort of energy to it because it's uh it's kind of again it's that change of energy within the film is you've, you've got your sort of a your antagonist character there we've got this love story and we don't it's all mystery about what the creature is. And then you've got this other, other character who just appears out of nowhere, a ghostly presence who um, we don't know much about other than he's kind of like, kind of not the narrator so much in that he tells the story, but he's kind of, you know, he's guiding William to what, towards what needs to be done by the end yeah. of the film. And yes. um, yeah, and, and Grant, you know, it, it's kind of, it, it was sort of a quite a long search to find the right person for that. And um, yeah, with the minute I kind of saw, I saw his show reel, I was like, you know, that's the guy. And he did, a, you know, he did a, he did a little self tape for us. And I was, you know, I was sold straight away. I mean, I just thought this guy, we have to get this guy. So that's awesome. And um, and we were lucky enough that he loved the script and wanted to wanted to do it. So as I said, it's um, I think that it helps so much with something like this as well. You when you do have people who can give you great performance uh, performances because it is that thing about it just elevates the the production value of the whole thing it makes it feel more solid as a film yeah yeah for sure did did you have um did you have a favorite monster movie growing up 
Well, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, horror has always been close to my heart, to be honest. I mean, you know, I, I sort of grew up with horror. I, funnily enough, actually, I had um, we did a we did a sort of screening for a few people, a private screening a few days ago. Yeah. And I just I just remembered, actually, when we were when we were kids, I kind of grew up watching Michael Jackson thriller. Yeah, and that was kind of, um, and I never really thought about it that much before. But obviously, that was John Landis who did American Wolf in London as well. But and I just kind of find that obviously, I've made my first my first short film was a zombie movie, and my first <laughs> uh, my first feature film was a, a werewolf movie. And of course, in in that, you've got both of them. You've got that fantastic werewolf that Michael Jackson turns into, and then the zombies. Obviously, it's uh, you know it's absolute classic. So um, I guess it, it and it's funny. It's not something I directly thought of because you know obviously american werewolf in london was the obvious one for me and um you know dawn of the dead would be another another great Ooh, favorite yeah. of mine it's a, you know different genre but you know george a romero is my, my absolute hero so it's kind of um yeah but I, I love i do love my horror films yeah he kind of uh he made horror movies on a budget kind of in vogue you know he he it seems like he was doing that before everybody else kind of figured Absolutely. No, he was, um, yeah, pioneer, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah. He's one, he's Pretty well, great. He's one what they are today because of him. So, uh, yeah. And that, was <laughs> and that was the funny thing. When I did my short film, we didn't even realize, but we actually um, we actually shot it and on the end of a year after the day he died on the anniversary of, of oh, his wow. death. And it was, just, it was just a weird coincidence. But then when we did our first screening, it just so happened that that was the same day as the uh, like what, 20 years 30 years later 40 might be four years sorry my massive I can't remember right now but it was like it was, a, it was the anniversary of when they first released Dawn of the Dead in in oh now that's neat so it was just it was just weird it was just very weird coincidences with that so you just sometimes you think you know okay it's uh he was with us in spirit a little bit that's maybe. right was, yeah it's meant to be it's meant to be is there is there any plans to um to revisit this world will you, will you be doing a sequel or other movies within this world or is it self-contained for this one film i think it's self-contained for this particular story to be honest i i yeah. it, uh, i think unless i was really to come up with a compelling reason to go back to it um i i like the way it's been left because you, you know it, it, without giving anything away it's I, I feel like it it comes to a natural conclusion sort of it but it leaves I mean I guess you could say it does leave things open but for me it's kind of it's leaving it's that point of leaving things open sometimes that that is the best way to end it That's right. right you know you go back and someone is alive or or dead or whatever and it's kind of it, it takes away something from the film you've uh, created so I, I think I think it's that, that's just the one yeah just yeah well and, and that's that's good enough for us, although I'm super excited to watch the uh, the whole film. So the film's Wolf Garden. It comes out the 28th? 28th, yeah. That's not not too far off now. So no, no. It's uh, coming uh, fast. Yeah. I can't believe we're coming up on the end of February already. It's gone quick. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's, crazy. It's moving pretty fast. So, so, Wayne, anything else that you're working on that we can kind of keep an eye out for? Well, I mean, it's at the moment, it's, it's been a lot of focus on pushing this out there. So this has sort of taken over my life for the last uh, two and a half years. So it's, been, it's been very crazy with that. I do have uh, a couple other projects that are sort of in development and, and pushing, and I'd really like to be filming at least one of them at some point this year. But it's, uh, it is kind of a watch this space type deal at the moment. But hopefully with the release of this, um, you know, we, we could get things sped up pretty, pretty yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, that's exciting. This has to be like the the most exciting part of of putting a film out and also probably the most stressful you know that anticipation right before you put it out yeah no it's it's a weird kind of feeling it is it is kind of strange because there's still a lot of bits and pieces to be done there's work to be done like the pr and uh and marketing it but there's there's also that thought of uh you know what are people actually going to think of it which is, right. uh, which is kind of you know terrifying because you make the movie you want to make and you sit in the editing suite and you you get it to a point where you say oh that you know that's i'm happy with that I'll, uh, you know that's the best yeah. i can do with it and and i i you know for me i think all you can ask for really is is it is it a film that I would sit and watch and enjoy and, and and the answer would be yes for me. And you just have to hope that everyone else feels the same way, or at least a, a good majority of people feel the same <laughs> way. You're never gonna get them all, are you? Well, I I think I think it's gonna do really well. I mean, you can kind of tell from the trailer, it's well made, 
the uh, uh, the cinematography is beautiful. It looks great. I you know I I'm a fan of uh, yours and your your fellow actors. I I just I think you've got a lot going for it. Plus, we do need a good you know kind of uh, monster movie. Uh, we haven't had that in a little while, especially with uh, with the werewolf side. And I love the uh, the different angle on it. I think that makes it unique and kind of fun. So I, I'm looking forward to it. We can't wait for it to come out, which is the 28th. And it's going to be available everywhere, right? Streaming everywhere? Yeah, in the U.S. Um, at the moment, it's, it's just the U.S. release, but hopefully everywhere else will follow very shortly afterwards. But yeah, it's, it's all across the streaming services. So all the platforms, it's, it's pretty much everywhere, I believe. So uh, all the main yeah. ones anyway. So yeah. Well, that's yeah, terrific. Well, Wayne, before we, uh, before we wrap up, um, where can we find you? on social media social media uh where well, you can find me as wayne david on um on instagram or, or facebook uh but we've got uh wolf garden feature film page on on both as well so or lightning strike pictures which is the company but yeah obviously wolf garden uh wolf garden to find the film or wayne david to find me <laughs> yeah so easy it's, enough it's yeah either i found it really easy it, it wasn't uh you, you came right up so that's uh, that's terrific. Well, Wayne, thank you for taking a little bit of time with us. I'm excited for the movie. Good luck on this and both of the uh, upcoming projects as well. I know I know I know we're just starting to get to see you, but we're going to see a lot more of you. I'll try my best. <laughs> no so pressure. Much. Yeah, no, no, I, you know, if, if people like it, I'll keep doing it. That's that's the way it goes. Absolutely. And if, and if absolutely. you don't like it, I'll... If they don't like it, I'll probably still keep doing it anyway. <laughs> but, uh, I'll keep going, All right. Yeah. All right, All right. Wait, one second. I hope you guys enjoyed that. So that was Wayne David, and the movie is Wolf Garden, and it is out February the 28th everywhere. So keep an eye out for that. If you're like me, a universal monster lover you know or you like the victorian monsters whatever your uh inclination is as far as monster movies this one should fit the bill it's psychological it's got uh, a good payoff near the end of it you know the ef effects are going to be practical but i think really well done so i think you'll uh, like that and who doesn't like a good werewolf movie so Really excited for that one. February 28th, Wolf Garden um, stars uh, Wayne David, written by Wayne David, directed by Wayne David, which is very impressive. So do your part and help support this film. You know, we love it kind of shining a light as a podcast on these projects that maybe don't get as much attention, but are really well done, well made well-written stories we want you to uh to find those and watch so definitely help out with this one if you're finding us for the first time and you'd like to support us we could definitely use the help a couple of easy ways to do it if you're watching it's youtube meistercon pod just smash that subscribe button that would really help us out just uh just hit subscribe that's it it's free really help us out if you're listening Wherever you listen to your podcast from, whatever application you're using, just subscribe there and that'll help us as well. We put out episode 531 today, and you can find all of those audio and video on our website, meistercon.com. And that'll also let you know if we're doing anything in studio, if we're going on location, if we're covering a convention, whatever we have going on, it'll be on the website, meistercon.com. So definitely find us there we can use your support as well thank you guys so so much till next time bye everybody